In this video, we're going to learn how you begin to execute a jQuery. So with JavaScript, we typically wait for a page to load before we go ahead and execute our JavaScript statements. That's often done by responding to the onload method of the window object. And then we proceed to follow that with whatever functions we would like to execute. We have a similar situation with jQuery, but in this case, we have to wait for the document object model to load. So what we need to do is the equivalent of waiting for the onload event. I've opened up exercise underscore one underscore three dot HTML to begin this exercise. Using jQuery, the way that we do this is to invoke the ready function, passing to the jQuery method the document itself that's being loaded. So if you recall, first of all, we need a script block. So we'll go ahead and place a script block here. And then we call the jQuery function. And we pass the document object itself because it is here that we want to apply or invoke the ready function. So essentially, this is going to wait till the document object model has been loaded and we're ready to start executing some jQuery. So once again, we can invoke a function at this point because we've already invoked the ready function on the document itself. This particular web page has one hypertext link on it that you'll find right here. It's the link to jQuery.com and the ready function itself within the documentation. So what we'd like to do is acquire that hypertext link. So remember, we do that by passing to our jQuery function the element that we're looking for. So in this case, we're looking for an anchor tag. Now that we've queried the element that we'd like to locate on the web page, we perform some action on it. So what we're going to do is respond to the click by executing a function. We'll pass in the click event in this case. And we'll create an alert box. Our alert box is going to indicate that we've prevented the default behavior of the link, which is obviously to traverse the link and go to the website. So we're going to prevent that behavior. And we're going to let the user know that we've done that. And we've done it with a method called prevent default. So there's our closing curly brace and our closing parenthesis and our terminator, which is the semicolon. So we've popped up the alert box, but we've never invoked the actual prevent default method. So at this point, if we click the link, uh, we'll actually go to jQuery.com, but we're going to prevent that behavior by taking the click event object itself and invoking a method called prevent default. Now we'll continue making sure that our Closing brackets are all in place. I think the last one that we're missing would be right here. And that should take care of it. So before we can test this file, we still have to include our jQuery library. So make sure you've included a script block that references the jQuery library. At this point, you should be able to save the file, test it in the browser, and when you click the one link that's on the page, rather than traverse that link, which should take us to jQuery.com, our alert box pops up instead. In this video, you learned the equivalent of what we typically do in JavaScript, which is to wait for the loading of the document before we start executing our JavaScript. And in this case, what we do instead is we invoke the ready method of the jQuery object which is a method that was performed on the document itself.